Okay, like anything that you want to uh, introduce, because OBE was first introduced in uh, Malaysian Higher Education in February 2005. The then Minister of Education was uh, the Honorable Shafi'i Muhammad. He has given the instruction to engineering schools throughout the country, public universities, they are to embark on OBE. And uh, the, while the rest of the programs were not aware of OBE, the engineering programs were subjected to OBE simply because, one, the minister wanted to have a, a pilot program going, going forward with OBE. Two, because the Board of Engineers wanted to become full signatory of the Washington Accord. Given the two fact, uh, the engineering faculties moved forward. And based on the experience that we had with the engineering faculties and later in 2011 with the rest of the uh, programs throughout the country, one of the biggest challenges, one of the biggest issues is getting buying in. So mostly uh, people talk about awareness. So we got to give awareness to our academic staff, we got to give awareness to our student on OBE. We're changing. I don't think awareness is where we stop. Awareness is just a start, but the most important thing, the biggest stumbling block is most of the university management or the program owners fail to get buying in from the academics. See, academics are a different breed of people. You do not instruct them to do. You have to reason with them. You have to argue with them to say that what we are doing is much better than what we had been doing. So you have to get this buying in. Once you get the buying in, then, then you are talking about at least the curriculum will change. Now, once the curriculum has changed, the content has changed, then you start talking about delivery method. And when you talk about delivery method, you need to have the supporting environment. The supporting environment, for example, you are talking about uh, if I can quote now, uh, MQA is insisting among the functional skills is digital skills. We have to develop digital skills. Then you may want to talk about digital collaboration. If you talk about digital collaboration, uh, you have to be connected. Not only connected, not only access, but the bandwidth must be decent. So this sort of thing. So you are talking about the supporting structure in terms of learning spaces and the infrastructure. It has to be there. And the other thing is that the lecturers need to be retrained. They need to be uh, guided on how to, to uh, assess domains that we're not familiar. Most of our instructors are very familiar in assessing the cognitive domain. But they're not so in terms of psychomotor, in terms of effective domain. So this is uh, the major issue at this point of time. I think we, we have the buying in. I think we are good in coming up the design of the curriculum, but instruction, uh, instructional design and also assessment. This is a stage where we are at. And this requires a lot of training, a lot of support from the uh, management and also from the ministry. So again, I say, first is the uh, buying in. Number two is basically the um, support infrastructure. Number three is the training of the lecturers. So three major issues. Okay, um, if we look back at the history uh, in terms of my own involvement uh, for outcome based education, it's already, I think, uh, nearly 15 years since 2004, 2005, where we have been asked by the Board of Engineers Malaysia to implement uh, outcome based education. At first, of course, we we don't know what is it outcome based education, but by having a series of discussion and uh, uh, even we have uh, engaged uh, mentor from the Washington Accord countries. We have mentor from the from the states, and uh, we started to uh, learn in terms of uh, how the implementation of OBE. Obviously, when we want to introduce something new at the faculty. Um, we have uh, many registrants, of course, uh, the, the senior professors, the, um, uh, um, the, 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 the other, other lecturers that uh, normally they are already get used in terms of how they implement things, uh, definitely they have, they would create registrants. So that, that's the first thing that we face in terms of getting all the support from, from all lecturers involved because outcome-based education is not just one man show; mm. it is about teamwork. So, uh, in order for us to get or implement 
outcome based edu education successfully we need to get everybody involved okay so um, in our own experience um, I, I probably it's best for me to share uh, my own experience um, uh, at the faculty of engineering we started with only one program uh, implementing outcome based education so we started with civil engineering program and then once it has one cycle one cycle meaning that one academic cycle so we implement to first year student and then goes to the second semester and then we, we feel that yes we are having the right uh, way of doing it and with the support of the faculty of engineering management during those days so the dean himself um, and the management of all the departments are giving full support then um, we managed to convince that outcome based education is the for us is probably at that particular time is uh, probably the best eh? we, are, we are trying our very best to ensure that the the way that we conducted outcome based education is the right way and having said that um, uh, after implementing uh, for more than one program we we then um, uh, realized that outcome based education need documentation so because uh, uh, to, in order for us to to monitor the attainment for every student in our class we need to have a proper documentation so uh, from time to time after a couple of years we, we we end up with a pile of documents and uh, it's very difficult to track who are the student uh, uh, which uh, still lack in terms of certain attainment and uh, we also having difficulties in terms of uh, trying to intervene and and keep all the evidences and from there we propose to the management of the faculty of engineering uh, during that day uh, that we really need a kind of like uh, an IT system a system to administer outcome based education uh, activities luckily alhamdulillah we managed to get a seed funding from the uh, ministry ministry of higher education uh, to uh, develop a system that we call as my OBE okay my stand for Malaysia OBE for outcome based education and through that particular uh, system we then uh, managed to have a proper uh, 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 monitoring of the implementation of outcome based education in the faculty of engineering so um, I w what can I say uh, through the experience there are of course it started with resistance and then uh, from and we realized that there are too many documentation and and eventually we, we end up to build our own very own system what are some of the issues and challenges in implementing OBE for education plenty a lot of challenges okay uh, number one they say the old one worked for a long time whatever the old one was called, right? Uh, so why is there a need to change? Um, that actually was not completely true. There was a lot of um, uh, feedback, inputs, evaluation that, that uh, raised issues about whether how we were doing in the past was really working. Okay, there was this, um, anytime you are, moving away from what was the convention, what was the tradition, uh, what was the norm, what a status quo to something new, there will definitely be a lot of challenges. It's just um, to be expected because you're dealing with human beings, you're dealing with organizations, so there will be a lot of uh, resistance to change. That's, that's already we know that takes place. But also is when you go into outcomes, or outcome-based education, one of the big issue is, what are those outcomes? So there will be uh, many people with different ideas of what those outcomes need to be. So when you have a long list of outcomes, which is desirable, valuable, important to different groups of people, how do you actually um, distill this into a set that everyone can agree on? So that's the first challenge. So when MQF in, in 2003, 2004, when, um, when they were talking about the national qualification framework, 
uh, you had the same. Okay, what are some of the outcomes that uh, we should we should talk about? Uh, and the list is a long one. Right? Everybody has their own list of things that uh, should be the outcome. Uh, so when you want to ha agree on a set of uh, outcomes at the national level, the highest level, uh, that will be one of the challenges because you need to decide what to leave out, what to make explicit, what to be left to be implicit. Okay, it is there, but you don't. You're not saying, for example, Malaysian qualifications framework. The old version doesn't say anything about digital skills. Didn't directly talk about IT skills. So someone in that field said. The future is digital, and how come the the uh, framework doesn't talk about uh, digital uh, competency or IT competency as one of the primary outcome? Um, why should it be implicit, right? Uh, it just mentioned should be able to uh, the the outcomes need to address information management. Um, so it was implicit. Uh, so those. That's the first uh, major challenge. You try and agree at the national level on what are, how do we, how, what are nationally uh, the outcomes for education? Okay, this is the broadest level, right? At the national level, framework level outcomes. Uh, so the 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 challenges uh, become uh, much more uh, complicated because the people who need to do this don't have the training. So when going to all the taxonomies and how to do this at the cost level, at the assessment level, things like that. They had been so, and the challenges were also for accrediting bodies like MQA, right? Because you have to train assessors to understand outcomes uh, uh, in terms of uh, clarity of outcomes, assessing uh, the program in terms of the outcomes, uh, and and uh, systems in terms of uh, the connection to the outcomes uh, for a particular program. Um, so there, there were challenges as well there. And the people who are doing it are also from academics from university. So it's the same group of people who are coming in. Uh, so there was a lot of challenges in terms of getting these people ready uh, to evaluate and make judgments about the program. And, uh, and there are consequences to this, right? I mean, accreditation approvals and things like that. So um, that, that was one of the challenges that um, regulatory bodies like uh, ministry, like MQA, uh, had to deal with in terms of getting people ready to deal with um, outcomes. Um, and, and also um, the, the, the challenge is actually to also deal with students, okay, to get the, the students to own the outcomes because otherwise all outcomes were uh, dealt, uh, were developed and used by uh, the educators. And the students who, in whose name all this is done, because it's supposed to be putting the student in front, putting the student uh, um, at the center of uh, the OBE, um, and getting them to actually um, understand these outcomes, uh, and also to use these outcomes as a self-measurement uh, tool. Okay, this is what at the end of the program. This is at the end of the course, and. Uh, did I get that? Um, and does the whatever the level of attainment that is given to you does it match uh, your own sense of uh, achievement? Uh, have I actually gained anything in the, in the program and things like that? Whether you get a poor assessment or good assessment, but you also so the, one of the challenges is actually to get students to own it. Otherwise, it's done for them, yet they are still not really involved.